One of the hottest trends on YouTube right now is ordering these random mystery boxes from complete strangers on the deep web and opening them on camera. I don't know why I didn't realize a clear majority of these videos are fake and staged for their scare factor, but I didn't. I thought it was a great idea and hopped on the bandwagon to claim my YouTube stardom that I desperately longed for. For those who don't know a lot about the deep web, it's simply a part of the internet that isn't accessible from your basic Chrome, Firefox, or Explorer search engines. You must download the encryption program Tor and the Tor browser for starters. It's not illegal to access this part of the internet, but since it is anonymous, a great deal of illegal actions happens there. The possibilities are endless. I grabbed my laptop I've had since I graduated in 2011 and downloaded the required programs. I prefer to use my laptop over my desktop in case of viruses and such. My seven-year-old laptop is a little more disposable. I had a little Bitcoin phase a few years ago when it was blowing up, so I had a little saved already. It wasn't much, only 0.1 Bitcoin, which translates to roughly 632 US dollars but it was enough for what I was looking for. After the downloads were finished, I opened the browser and started my journey at the Hidden Wiki website. They provided a lot of useful links to get you started on the deep web. I scrolled through the warnings and gifts of what it was and found the links I was looking for. Almost forgot, I muttered to myself as I grabbed the duct tape from my desk drawer. I cut a tiny square piece off the end and placed it over my webcam. Call me paranoid but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I clicked on the first link and waited what seemed like forever for the page to load. It was another very plain page with a list of popular websites that you could scroll through on the side. I continued my search through the web links until I found a page dedicated to mystery boxes. I wanted to find one around $500 so people knew I meant business on my channel. These were relatively small, staying around the 0 0.0125 to 0 0.05 Bitcoin range. I was worried about being scammed. I decided to continue my search after a quick bathroom break. When I came back, I noticed my cursor was off to the side and was able to click on a link that must have matched the background color of the web page because I couldn't see it. I indulged in my curiosity and hit the link. I was taken to a pitch black page with small white texts near the top. I'm selling one random package to any brave soul to receive it for only 0.12 Bitcoin or best offer. Only one, huh? I thought to myself. I'll shoot my shot. I hit the small payment button and was asked how much I'd like to spend. I entered 0.1 Bitcoin with fingers crossed. The payment went through without any hesitation and I was instantly met with a chat box asking where I'd like my package sent. I know this wasn't a good idea and I regret it to this day, but the other YouTube channels use their own address often, so I thought nothing of it. I gave them my home address. I waited over a month for the box to come in, 36 days to be exact. It arrived directly on my front porch and was wrapped numerous times in red tape. I set my camera on the tripod and adjusted it to show me and the box on this small wooden table. I draped a sheet in the background, so it looked a little more professional. I collected some gloves and scissors, so I can bang the video out in one go. Hey everybody, welcome to tonight's vlog. Boy, do I have a surprise for you. I continue my monologue, mentioning how I got the box and how much I paid. Without wasting further time, let's open this deep web mystery box. I grab the scissors and cut along the red tape. I make sure my gloves are on tight, and I rip the box open. My brow furrows as I see just one book. Without saying a word, I take the book out of the box. I was pretty pissed I spent over $600 on a book. Well folks, looks like we got us a dud. These pages better be made of gold. The outside of the book was old and tattered, and it smelled of mildew and mold. I cracked the book open to the first page and glanced over the contents. It's an old photo album. Smells of old rot. Let's take a look at the pictures. 
I showed the camera a view of the page's contents. It has four pictures on the first page, all labeled by days. The first one says day one, the second one day two, and so on. The pictures were taken with an old Polaroid camera. These were pictures of airplanes, random suitcases, a couple of taxis, and some pretty shady motels. Looks like someone's old travel photos. I continue flipping through the pages. Every day was a different photo of nature or cars or trains. Day 18 held the oddest photo yet. It was just a mask, handcuffs, a gag, and a bottle of some sort of drug it looked like. These people have one hell of a fetish. I try to keep the video interesting. I zoomed into the picture with the camera so everyone can see it. Around day 32, things started getting weird. There was a picture of a house, but not just any house. It was the house I grew up in, my parents' house. My hand covered my mouth as I gasped for air. How is this? I'm unable to form a sentence. I'm at a loss for words. Day 33, I turn the page and see a man and a woman handcuffed and gagged. I immediately expel the contents of my stomach as I see my own mom scared and crying face and my dad face first in a pile of what looked like black tar. Day 34, this photo was taken inside what looks like a vehicle. I focused my gaze to the dashboard where a small photo was barely visible. It's an old school photo of me. They're in my dad's truck. Day 35. Another house. But this one much smaller. The photo is too blurry to make out the details. My hands are trembling and all I can hear is my heart pounding in my ears. I flip to the last page. I immediately throw the book to the ground and run to the window. I jiggle the hatch frantically and throw it open. Without hesitation, I jump out and run to the neighbors. As I'm running, I turn around for a brief second. What I saw haunts me to this day. A tall, hooded figure stood in my room. Looking at me through the window, he stood motionless. Before lifting his hands and waving, I screamed for my neighbor who heard me inside and called the cops. I sat and just cried. I cried out of fear for my life. I cried for my parents. I cried because it was all my fault. My lack of common sense got my parents killed and I will have to live with that forever. If you access the deep web, do not release any personal information. Even if people on YouTube do it, most of it's not real. And always check your boxes. It would have saved me a lot of trouble if I would have noticed the box I received had no tracking sticker on it. It was hand delivered. There used to be a small YouTube channel called Sam's Online Food Review. It was run by my best friend Sam Ryder, a channel full of videos that consisted of Sam eating and reviewing food and drink before a camera. His channel garnered around 10,000 subscribers, which although wasn't huge, it was big enough for Sam to be dedicated to it. I can recall numerous times of sitting in the passenger seat of his car, staying out of his shot as moments prior, he announced he wanted to video himself trying something he picked up in the store. Only moving after he signed off with his signature, thumbs up or down in his catchphrase, I like it or I loathe it. He was liked for his friendly attitude and happy all around good guy persona. He was well received by his audience. Rarely were there any hate comments. And when there was, Sam would shrug them off and keep smiling. Sam was always smiling. Sam's online food review went dark seven months ago. No warning, no notice, just deactivated. I didn't hear or see from Sam despite numerous phone calls and house visits to no avail. Six days after his channel was deleted, I called the police to do a welfare check on Sam. I was worried he had fallen ill or hurt himself. The police made entry into his property and found nothing, and Sam was declared a missing person. A week after Sam was declared missing, a dog walker discovered a horrifically mutilated corpse on a railway line. The body had severe lacerations all around the head, arms, chest, and legs, and was almost cut in two across the waist. The decomposing internal organs splayed out of the gruesome V-shaped cut. 
the autopsy report noted that although no direct cause of death could be confirmed, it was likely the large slit in the throat that brought on death. The autopsy also turned up questionable findings, including the body missing its stomach and heart. Long strips of flesh removed off the chest, arms, and lower back, and that the body was exsanguated. The scene wasn't remarkably bloody, yet the body was almost completely drained of blood. Two weeks later, the police had identified the deceased. Despite the damage that occurred to the corpse, the teeth were intact enough to get a viable reference for dental records. My worst fears for Sam were realized. It was him. The police investigated, but could not find forensic evidence of any other person being on the scene. They eventually came to the conclusion that he was hit by a passing freight train. The lacerations and disembowelment attributed to being dragged under and the missing organs being explained away as being eaten by wildlife, a fox maybe. Sam's mother decided it was best to cremate what remained of her only son. I stood next to her as the beach coffin was pulled into the large furnace. As the door closed and the gas jets ignited with a whoosh, she broke down into tears and so did I. I stood there, sobbing for the 90 minutes it took for one of the people I grew up with and shared so many memories was vaporized. I mourned my friend and did my best to move on. And it was going well. I got distracted, got a new job, started dating a girl I met through my work. A few months passed and even though I missed Sam, things were going well. Right up to the point when I was browsing Reddit at 3 a.m. and I received a Facebook message from the account of my dead friend. I froze, seeing his profile picture in the messenger bubble, a picture taken during good times. Sam's wide smile plastered on his face. I felt a sudden chill. A profound sense of fear enveloped me. You know the fear that makes you cold and your limbs ache as the slow drip of adrenaline spreads throughout your body. With dread, I opened the message. It was a link to a file sharing website. I stared at the seemingly random amalgamation of numbers and letters that made up the URL, my head racing through what the hell was on the other side of the link, and more importantly, why did my dead friend send me it? My hand, seemingly on autopilot, brought the cursor above the link. With my gut instinct screaming no, I clicked on the link. Before my finger had lifted from the click, I immediately regretted what I just did. Chrome opened a new tab to the website. The screen was gray, apart from a black rectangle in the middle of the page, which had a play button on it. I stared at it, unwilling to click. What I was scared of, I did not know. Around ten seconds had passed, then the screen refreshed. Instead of the play button, the rectangle had the words auto-playing in five seconds in bright white on it. I watched as the numbers counted down, trying to understand what was going on. An abrupt buzzing noise made me jump. The video began to play. The camera was pointed at what appeared to be a grimy white tiled surface. I could hear the sound of muffled whimpering, followed by footsteps of someone approaching the camera. There was some slight rustling noise as the camera was adjusted. The screen blurred out as the camera was turned. When the camera came back into focus, I let out a choked gasp. In the middle of a white, tiled room, Sam lay on his back on a stainless steel table. His eyes were pure, unfiltered terror. The light of a single bulb hanging over the table reflected the sheen of sweat that coated his forehead, his naked chest rising and falling rapidly in panic. He looked into the camera and attempted to yell. The noise, muffled by a tight cloth gag that was bound around his head. His hands were also bound together tightly with duct tape. I stared at the screen, feeling increasingly sick, my brain failing to grasp what was going on before I could even comprehend what was happening. The sound of Sam squirming and whimpering was interrupted by a high-pitched, Welcome to Sam's Online Food Review. Today we have a special treat. The mocking tone came from behind the camera. Sam's panic increased. He started jerking his body, trying to free his hands. The voice continued. Today, we will try what is considered a delicacy in many countries, although usually a forbidden one, that is. The camera zoomed out slightly, 
and a man appeared in the frame standing in front of Sam. He was dressed in a white coat with a red striped apron on. He wore a butcher's hat and a cloth face mask. In his rubber, gloved hands, he held a large, red-handled butcher's scimitar, and in the other he held a sharpening rod. The man started running the knife up and down the blade in a smooth fashion, the steel on steel making a smooth sh 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 noise. Sam's panicked, muffled yells grew stronger. The man placed down the sharpening rod and walked around the table. Sam turned his head and started what sounded like a desperate pleading with the man. Poor little man, the man cooed. It won't hurt long and you'll be delicious. Even from here I could see that tears filled my friend's eyes as he struggled. The man rolled Sam onto his front and pulled his head over the edge of the table. The man then walked out of the shot and returned with a metal bucket. He placed it on the floor below Sam's head. In a swift motion, he grabbed a tuft of Sam's hair and lifted his head and started slitting his throat. As I watched this happen, I threw up. I fell out of my chair in horror. I pulled myself away, not able to see any more. I fell again by the door, the speakers of my computer loud enough to hear what sounded like slicing and grunting. I lay curled up in the corner, sobbing amidst a panic attack. The minutes feeling like hours. When the sound stopped, I shakily got up and walked to my computer. Avoiding the pool of sick on the floor, I forced myself to look at the screen. The page had closed, and Chrome displayed the Reddit screen. The Facebook tab had one notification. I didn't want to click it, but I willed myself to. It was a message from Sam. I like it. Something happened to me a few weeks ago that I planned to keep a secret, but recently it has been eating away at me and I need to speak about it. The situation involves the dark web, but it isn't like all the other stories you hear of some unsuspecting soul learning of the dark web through a friend, going on it for the first time and browsing around until the inevitable comes across some horrifying page that leaves them sleepless for nights. No. This is the opposite, to be honest. I'm actually the one who would be terrifying these curious souls. You see, I'm a dark web prankster. Meaning, I spend my free time on the dark web messing with unsuspecting strangers. I join chat rooms and send them links to gory, but obviously fake videos. I place similar videos in place on my webcam in private chats, tricking the other user into thinking that they are chatting with a psychopathic killer. My favorite trick, though, is taking control of their cursor, manipulating the chat room and making the site unclosable unless they turn off their machine. This one gets the most screams and appalled expressions, and it is all achieved through running some simple bash scripts. Now, some people may think this is cruel, but I see it as a service, a free one at that. You see, those people come onto the dark web for these kinds of experiences. They hear somebody tell a scary story of their experience on the big bad dark web and they want to be able to tell similar stories in a sad attempt to be interesting. They come looking to be terrified and I ensure they aren't disappointed. Of course, I get my own enjoyment out of it, so it's a win-win. But recently, this has all changed. If you fly too close to the sun, you'll eventually get burned. I am burning. The night started like any other. I got back from work, made some dinner, and after washing up, I logged onto my PC and got to work. I jumped around a few chat rooms, but they were unusually quiet or taking too long to connect. And when they did connect, people left before I got the chance to mess with them. Eventually, I was able to keep someone around for more than a few seconds. They were some bald dude with a gnarly scar across his nose. His ears and face were both heavily pierced, and he had a python tattoo wrapped around his neck. A tough guy. They were always fun to make cry like a baby. The way I usually do these pranks is I keep the screen blank until I see the person. Then I choose from the collection of cam clips I have, and slowly escalate it from there. For this specific instance, 
I chose a clip of a cute girl who starts smiling and waving. The man smiled back and began typing until a message popped up. Hi. You are cute. Thank you. I like your tattoo. We went back and forth typing and discussing ourselves until I decided to start the fun. I took down the video of the girl and replaced it with a video that starts with a man tied to a chair. A masked man then begins to beat the man in the chair with a hammer. To my surprise, the man didn't seem horrified. Instead, he began to wholeheartedly laugh before sending another message. Funny, but I preferred the lady. I replied telling him to shut up or the girl would get it next. Once that message sent, the man's laughter stopped and he began to stare into the camera with a cold, emotionless gaze. You shouldn't be so rude. That message was the beginning of the end for my pranking. He began to type again and when he stopped, my jaw dropped and my fun was over. He sent the message and it was my full name. I quickly moved my cursor up and tried to X out of the chat, but my cursor froze before dissipating before my very eyes. I opened my console and began to frantically type some commands, but each one was denied. Slowly the chat began to turn black with red font. I was in a full-blown panic now. My heart was racing and I felt like I had spikes sticking into my arms, legs, and neck. I couldn't control my breathing and I was sweating profusely. All the while, that psycho was smiling into the camera, his dirty yellow teeth glaring at me as he continued to type. Let's have a look, shall we? The light from my webcam lit up, and sure enough, down in the left-hand corner of the screen was my terrified face staring aimlessly at the screen. My brain was screaming instructions at me, but my body couldn't react. I was frozen in fear. Eventually, I snapped out of it and stood up to turn off my computer when he screamed in a deep, grisly, distorted voice. Wait! This stopped me in my tracks. I looked back at the screen and he was gone, but only momentarily. When he returned, he was standing up, leaning over directly into the camera. He lifted his hand, balled into a fist, and opened it, revealing multiple human teeth which fell from his hand and bounced off the desk beneath. Then he sent the last message. See you soon, boy. He smiled as the words in the chat room began to fall off the screen, while a loud, screeching noise blared from my speaker. Just then, my computer switched itself off, leaving me standing staring at my reflection on the darkened monitor. I must have stood there for at least five minutes before I snapped out of it and went to bed. I didn't sleep that night. I couldn't. Every time my eyes closed, I saw his horrifying smile, and I heard the disgusting sound of the teeth hitting the desk. I called in sick to work the next day so I could try to relax and went for a run to clear my head. It helped enormously and three days later I had put the whole experience behind me. However, a week ago, about ten days after the incident, something happened which made me tell the story. At about 1 a.m. I was awoken by some strange banging sounds. I got up in a haze and looked out the front window to see an old maroon-colored Toyota Camry parked right behind my car and blocking it in. The banging had stopped but the strange car had put me on edge. I had lived in the neighborhood for a few years and I never once saw this car. I put on some clothes and began to walk down my stairs and towards the front door. But as I did, the banging began again. It was coming from the back door. I slowly walked towards the door with my heart racing. The closer I got, the louder the bangs. Whatever was causing it was trying to smash the door off its hinges. I wanted to scream, get the hell away from my house. However, for once in my life, I made the smart decision and ran up my stairs and into my bedroom before barricading my door and calling 911. The operator picked up just as I heard a window smash from downstairs. There's a man in my house. He's trying to kill me. I screamed before she responded, telling me to calm down and to tell her my location. She asked me to stay on the line and that a squad car was close by. I heard heavy footsteps stomping up my stairs and towards my door before stopping. The operator 
asked was I still there, but before I could answer her inquiry, the man started to attempt to knock down my bedroom door. The bangs on the door were deafening. The operator kept pushing me to respond, but I couldn't. I was transfixed on the door and how with every sickening thud that psycho got closer and closer. Suddenly, I could hear sirens in the distance and the banging stopped, followed by the sound of quick steps speeding down the stairs and shortly after the sound of a car starting and speeding away. A few minutes later, the lights from the sirens illuminated my room. This broke me out of my frozen, fearful state. I moved the barricade and ran down my stairs and out of the front door to the police. They questioned me for some time and searched around my house. They found shoe and axe marks on both doors. My bedroom door had a massive hole in it from where that lunatic was cutting it. I gave them a full statement and told them everything. When all was finished, they drove me to my friend's house as I couldn't stay at mine anymore. The next day, I rang my landlord and canceled my tenancy, which cost me my deposit and the cancellation fee. I've been staying with my friend while I look for a new place. I haven't been sleeping at all. I'm terrified that that psycho will find me again. The police found no evidence that could be used to find him, bar the Camry. But there are thousands of them in this state alone. I fear for my life every day and I'm unsure if I'll ever be safe again. Stay off the dark web. It was mostly used by jokesters, but it only takes one wrong click to put your life in danger. I'm just simply here to share an experience I had back in 2016 when I went on the deep web. I remember it like it was just yesterday. I was on a scary stories binge and listening to a bunch of different narrators retelling people's experiences from the deep web. I reached a point where I couldn't contain my curiosity, so I decided to learn how to reach the deep web myself. I'll save you all the filler so I don't make this submission too long, but I got on and immediately got to researching a few links I found. First it was a website about buying different products. It listed a bunch of prices as well as the sorts of services they offered. I soon grew bored and went to a video sharing website. The videos themselves were really low quality. In comparison, they were 144p, similar to what you can find here on YouTube. The videos that piqued my interest were the ones that were titled Join Us Part 1 and Part 2. They consisted of a series of what I like to best describe as promos that seek to recruit people for some strange cult I'd never heard of. I actually tried looking them up on the regular surface web, but I couldn't find any articles. Anyways, at the end of each video was an email that lets you contact them. Yes, dumb me actually decided to give them a message and ask if this was truly real, or just some sort of elaborate video series made by a bunch of bored college students. To my surprise, I got an automated email almost instantly, and it advised me I would soon be connected with a recruiter. I waited, and about 15 minutes later I got a response. They told me about the process of joining, including the information I would need to reply back with in order to be part of their so-called society. Now let's face it, I wasn't really going to give them my personal information. So to mess with them, I made up some random info and sent that in, telling them to have a nice day. I never did receive a response back. Fast forward a few nights later, and I was having trouble sleeping. I blamed it on the date I had a few hours ago that saw me drinking some pretty strong espresso alongside my girlfriend. Well, I want to say it was around 2 or 3 in the morning, my cell phone started to ring. Silly me had forgot to put it on silent. Not thinking of checking the caller ID, I answer it in my typical grumpy voice, only to be met with heavy breathing. Hello? Who is this? If you're not going to say anything, then don't call me again. They then hung up. Whatever, it must have been a wrong number. Five minutes later, I'm awoken from my struggling slumber to another phone call. Now I'm starting to get angry. I respond with some not-so-kind words, only to be met with music playing. And I'm not talking about the greatest hits. This music was played backwards, and it sounded really creepy. 
almost like some sort of strange nursery rhyme. Ten seconds of this playing, I once again say hello, only to be met with a voice. It sounded as if it was coming from one of those voice filters. That wasn't really nice of you sending me that false information. We were genuinely hoping you would take our offer and join our group. Would you still like to join? I freaked out. I instantly hung up and blocked the number, checking my doors and windows making sure they were locked. Not sure why I did that. It's not like the person who called showed up to my house, but I guess it was just instinct. Safe to say I got no sleep, and instead I went over to my girlfriend's house, where I had to explain over the next ten minutes why I suddenly showed up to her place and freaked out. She was just as scared as me, but we try to write it off as some weird coincidence. Fast forward to when I later returned to my house. I saw there was a missed call on my apartment house phone. Yes, I was still one of those who had a landline. It's because it came packaged with my phone and cable. Already forgetting the creepy call from earlier in the morning, I play the message, expecting to hear some sort of telemarketer. Instead, it was the deep voice from earlier, asking me why I was playing so hard to get. I lost it. I went to the police, and I had them ask my phone provider if they could do some sort of reverse phone search. Unfortunately, they were unable to trace the call. Now, here's the strange part. Almost as soon as this began, it stopped. I no longer received any further communication from this group, nor did I ever get an email back. I still have the email in case anyone is interested in seeing it. I can even send anybody a screenshot if you want proof. Edit. I have no clue how they got my number, although I have some theories. I hadn't realized it until recently, but when you send emails using your email, it can display your name. For some reason, I thought it only displayed your email address. I guess that's how they looked me up. I mean, it's not a far stretch, considering how easy it is for people to find out more about you. I downloaded Tor. Yes, the mother of all evil, Tor. After stumbling around for some time, I found my way to a cache of randomly placed links. There was one called More Power to Those Strong-Willed Ladies, and, being a sucker for a good advertisement, I clicked on it. I was disappointed at first when I saw that this was like any other random chat room, but what they were talking about was not normal at all. Hello, my dear fellows. Welcome to the place where these strong-willed ladies give up their bodies for our satisfaction. I couldn't help but laugh when I read the message. It felt like I was in a virtual circus or something. Start sending in your requests. We work on a first-come, first-serve basis. All these messages came rushing in from different users. Make her go bald. I want her nails taken off ASAP. Poke her eyes out. Burn, 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 burn. Why is her skin still intact? Peel it, now. I don't like her boobs. I think they're too big. Let's check if she has some silicone in them, shall we? Give her a snake tongue. Give her a third eye. No pinkies, no promises. I think she needs a nose job. Cut it off. Engrave a flamingo on her thigh. Female circumcision for the win. These messages already seemed disturbing. But the real unsettling part was yet to come. I couldn't understand what they were all talking about. So I finally decided to ask, What are you guys doing? Almost everyone in the chat ignored my message and kept sending the same weird requests. Cut her nipples. Use the branding iron on her, please. And could you write whore this time, please? Could you pull her hair out, please? Boil her hand. Use the taser on her. What are you guys doing? This time, someone noticed me. Are you new here? Yes. Oh. They sent me a direct message. Hi, it's me from the chat room. Hey. What do you want to know? What is everybody talking about there? Who is she? And why are they all saying that? You seriously don't know what's happening here? No, I don't. Then what are you even doing there? And how did you get access to that chat room? 
I just wanted to explore the dark web. And the link to the chat room just randomly popped up in front of me as I was looking around for something fun. Interesting. So you don't have any idea what's going on in there? No. Seriously, I don't know. Could you please tell me now? Do you have the other link as well? Which one? The one that leads to the video. No. Which video are you talking about? I was getting curious now, but little did I know that I would have been better off not knowing the details. I've been scarred for life ever since, and it is all because of my undue curiosity. Do you really want to know? Yes. Really? You don't really seem like the kind of person who would be happy to find out. I want to know. Okay, but it's dark, and I hope you won't freak out after this. Oh, don't worry about me. I can handle it. Just go ahead, please. So, in the chat room, you were just linked to a red room. You know what a red room is, right? No. I knew I would sound dumb, but I really didn't know. It's a place where sickos can play to watch live stream videos of rape, torture, murder, and worse. I was mortified at this revelation, but I don't know how you got into it without paying. I don't know. Do they torture people, or is it just acting? I really wanted them to say that it was all just scripted. No, it's all real, and I know how you got there. Anyone can enter the chat room, but only the people who have paid get access to the live stream and... Thank God you didn't pay these fuckers. But how do you know all this? And do you come here often? You have access to the live stream, don't you? Yes, I do. Do you enjoy watching it all? No. Then why? I can't reveal anything. But trust me, I'm not one of them. I work for an organization, and I'm trying to hack into their system and stop them. I don't know why, but I believed him. Why haven't you caught them yet? Why are they still roaming around free? That's disgusting. We're trying. These people are too clever. And their security system is hard to crack. But don't worry. We'll catch them. And then they'll have to face the consequences of their actions. I hope they do. Can I ask you another thing as well, if you don't mind? Yeah. Where do they get their targets? And how do they choose their targets? They kidnap their targets. At the end of each session, everyone gives suggestions, but they just choose their targets randomly. It's always the easy ones. And do you want to know something else? Yes. I've noticed that it's always one of the members who attended the previous session. That makes us all vulnerable. But why do people watch them if it increases their chances of becoming the next target? It's the thrill that drives all of these people here. I was freaking out. Don't worry. I'm here for you. I'm here to protect you. Just tell me where you live and I'll make sure to assign someone the duty of keeping an eye on your house. This was when I made the biggest mistake of my life. I believed them and told them my address. I don't know why I did it. I still can't forgive myself for doing it. But everyone makes mistakes. We just talked for a couple of minutes more. And then they went offline. My doorbell rang the next day. I received a parcel, but there was no name of the sender on it, and I couldn't tell which courier company it had come from either. I looked around, but there was no one inside who could have placed it at my door. I took it inside and was disgusted to find a human hand inside. There was also a letter which read, We have found you out, brave woman. You'll be our next guest on the show. That line shook me to the core. I just picked up the box and ran towards my car. My breathing was shallow and my heart was beating fast. I drove the maximum speed limit and went straight to the police. I told them everything. Until then, I had not even thought once that the person I talked to the day before could have been the culprit. But they were. I was placed under supervision for my own safety and the police caught them a week later. The person admitted to 16 murders and multiple assaults. So please, guys. I beg of you, don't ever share your personal information with anyone over the internet. Not until you are 100% sure that the person on the other side is not a psycho murderer. Keep yourselves and your families safe.
I've never been one of those people fascinated by the dark web. As a 16-year-old girl in high school, I had much better things to do. I'd prefer to hang out with my friends and get my nails done than spend all my time on the internet searching for this dark web. One day at school, though, my friend Kelly was telling me about how her boyfriend was dared to go on the dark web. There was some weird stuff on there. He said it was really creepy with videos of cults and sacrifices, Kelly said. Why would someone even want to see that stuff? It's disgusting, I said. Yeah, I wouldn't, that's for sure, Kelly said. At lunch that day, all my friends were talking about Robbie's dare and how one of us should do the dare. I didn't say anything as I did not want to even think about having to go on the dark web. Rape. Killers. Weapons. I knew what was on the dark web and I wanted none of it. Hey guys, maybe Charlotte should do the dare, my other friend Christine said. Heck no, guys. I'm not going on that creepy website, I said quickly. They all started chanting now. Do it, do it, do it, do it. People were starting to stare as I turned red. Finally, after more people started to join in, I gave up. Fine, I'll go on that stupid website, I screamed. They all started to cheer with Kelly saying, Okay, but just to make sure you do, you have to FaceTime me while you're going on. And don't worry, I'll have Robbie send you a link, she said with a smile. I was furious with them, but didn't say anything. Who cares? I'll just close my eyes when I see anything bad. They didn't say I had to look, I thought. That night, I got a text from Robbie, giving me a link to a website. He also said in the text, good luck. I got goosebumps reading it, but I wasn't going to chicken out as I knew my friends would never let me forget it. I FaceTimed Kelly as I was loading my link onto my computer, saying, this is so stupid. Can't believe I let you guys talk me into it. Oh, don't be like that. How about this? You only have to click on one site on the web, and that's it. I'll tell everybody you went on and we'll all have a good laugh, Kelly said on the phone. The link loaded, and I was taken to a black screen with a skull in the middle and a whole bunch of links, all in red. I gulped as I decided to click on the third link. I was taken to some kind of auctioning website. It didn't seem bad at first, but then I read the auctions. The auctions had female names attached to them with a link. I clicked on a random link which had a picture taken from a car of a girl walking home from school. She looked about my age with dark brown hair and green eyes. It had a description underneath that said Tiffany Smith, age 16, high school, Adelante High, parents, Martha and Gordon Smith. Hair color, brown. Eyes, green. Body description, small but packaged with good-sized breasts and small waist. Price, 20000 What do you see? Kelly said on the phone. Eh, it's some kind of sick auction where they're selling girls, I said in a shaky voice. Are you serious? Call the police right now, she screamed on the phone. I was about to hang up and dial 911. I froze as I saw a name on the top of the list. Charlotte Miller. I freaked out and started to cry. I don't know why I did, but I clicked on the link next to my name. The picture was also taken from a car of me walking home from school. The description said, Charlotte Miller, age 16, high school, Spring Hill High, parents, Cindy and Harry Miller. Hair color blonde, eyes brown, body description, excellent body with curvy hips, and great sized breast. Price, 60000 I screamed and started to cry. Kelly tried to talk to me, but I couldn't hear her. I hung up the phone and ran to my parents' room. They heard me and ran out of their room before I could even come in. I told my dad about the website, which he and my mom checked on. They called the police shortly after. After looking at the website also, they said there was nothing they could do. The link was untraceable, so they couldn't figure out where the website came from. They said they would keep an officer nearby watching my house in case someone came. After that, they left. I slept in my parents' room that night.
I didn't get any sleep as the image of me walking home from high school and the description of me were all burnt into my mind. How do they know all this? Were they going to come for me? I thought the whole night. I told Kelly and my friends everything that happened as they all listened in shock. They apologized for making me go on the website and said that we should all hang out after and go shopping to get my mind off what happened. I agreed as we made plans to meet at the mall at four. I asked Kel if she could walk home with me, but she said she was getting a ride from her mom. Panicking, I called my parents and asked if they could pick me up, but they weren't even home from work as they were stuck in traffic. I somehow got the courage to walk home by myself. As I started walking to my house, you'll be okay. You're only 15 minutes away from your house, and it's the afternoon. No one is going to do anything with people around, I thought to myself as I walked. As I walked, though, I could see out of the corner of my eye a man walking behind me fast. I started to speed up my walking, but he followed and got faster as well. I freaked out and started to run and didn't look back. I ran all the way to my house as I fumbled for the keys to the front door. Just as I was about to put the key in, I felt a prick in my shoulder and the world faded to black. I woke up to find myself in a dark room, lit only by a computer right in front of me. In the computer, I saw that it was on Google Meet with at least 50 people in it. When I tried to move myself, chained to the ground, I screamed and pleaded for help to the computer with no avail. Then, as I looked at the camera, I saw a figure emerge from the shadows. He wore black jeans and a black hood. I couldn't see his face in the dark. He came up right behind me and spoke in a deep voice to the computer. How much? I saw in horror as the people in the meat started numbering off prices. 60000 80000 90000 The biggest price came shortly after 115000 There were no prices named after that. Then. The man spoke, going once, going twice, sold. Two days later, Kelly stares at the poster in her hand, tears in her eyes as she reads, missing, Charlotte Miller. She cries even more as she sees the smiling picture of Charlotte on the poster, looking so happy with her glistening blonde hair and brown eyes. Charlotte, I'm so sorry. When I was around 20 years old, I was living in Michigan. I always had a big appetite for horror reads, so one day I was reading about some spine-chilling experiences when I came across some stories of people who had found extremely disturbing stuff on the dark web. This intrigued me. I wanted to see what the hype of the dark web was all about. I called a friend and asked him about the dark web and how to access it. He was a bit skeptical at first, but after the call ended, I received a message from him, explaining how it worked. I made dinner, took it to my room, and turned on my laptop. I had a gut feeling that this wouldn't end well, but I just ignored it. Finally, I reached the dark web. A lot of notifications popped up on my screen at once. I clicked on one of them, and it was some sort of chat room. They were all talking about the most random stuff ever, and then suddenly... One of them noticed me there, and I got a direct message from someone named Ronald McDonald. The conversation, and what ensued after, was the worst thing I'd experienced in my life. The chat went as follows. Hey there, newbie. What brings you here? Hi. I just wanted to see what the hype was all about. Oh, you mean the hype of the dark web? Yeah. Oh, don't worry. You'll find out soon enough. By the way, do you want to play a game? No, I better leave here as there's nothing much to see here. Hey, come on girl, give it some time. You won't regret it. This should have been the first red flag for me, but I was too dumb to notice it. How would he guess that I was a girl when I had used my boyfriend's name as my username? Okay, what's the game? Two truths and a lie. Oh, I know that one, let's do it. You're going first. Okay. Two truths and a lie. One, I am adopted. Two, I was the first person in my family to go to college. Three, I grew up on an island. You weren't the first person in your family to go to college. 
come on. How did you know that? Well, I have my ways. This message came with a cringy, winking gif. He also sent me an image. I was hesitant to download it and open it at first, but then I did, and I was shocked to see that it was a picture of the college that I went to. What the fuck, dude? You're creepy AF. How are you doing that? I was dumbfounded. There was no possible way for him to know about my college, but I didn't want it to stop there. I wanted to check if he was sure, or was it just a lucky guess? Can I have another turn? Sure. Two truths and a lie. One. I went to prom wearing a red gown. Two, I can hold my breath underwater for two minutes. Three, I am the fur mama of a Shepsky, a German Shepherd, and Siberian Husky mixed breed. Oh, that's easy. Really? Tell me then. I'm waiting on you. I smiled because I thought I had outsmarted him this time. He was taking too long to respond, and it made me believe that the college stunt was just a lucky guess. Didn't you go to prom in a dark blue silk dress? You looked pretty in it. Or should I say, yummy. By the way, say hi to the little fella for me. What's his name again? Buddy, if I'm not wrong. He was right about every single detail and I was freaking out. My hands were trembling. Okay, stop with these fucking tricks now and tell me how you know all this. Dark web isn't that boring after all, is it? Hey, I asked you something. Okay. My turn now. Two truths and a lie. One, I am a cannibal. Two, my fridge is stocked with human meat. Three, my next meal will be you. Stop messing around. I know you're trying to play with my head, but trust me, you're doing it to the wrong person. I tried to close the window, but it wouldn't close. This guy had somehow hacked my laptop. Hey, that's cheating. You can't leave the game like this, but it's okay. I'll give you another chance at it because I cheated too. Instead of giving you two truths and one lie, I gave you only truths. I didn't reply. I was still trying to close the window. I even tried shutting off my laptop, but it wouldn't shut down. You're hacking my laptop, aren't you? Stop it now. You won't find anything on my laptop. Ah, oh, don't be mad. You know what? When you're mad, your body releases adrenaline. And let me tell you some inside info. Adrenaline makes the meat dry and I prefer my burger patties soft and moist. So please, my happy meal, don't stress yourself. Oh, shut up. I typed, but it appeared on the screen as, Sure, my master. Your wish is my command. I was disgusted to the core. At last, when nothing else worked, I just closed the laptop screen so I wouldn't have to look at all the messages he was sending me, which included all sorts of gifts and pics. But closing the screen didn't stop him either. Somehow, he figured out that I had done it, and he started to send me weird voice messages which kept playing on their own. I will come for you, my happy meal. My happy, happy, happy meal. Happity, bappity meal, he sang. This singing continued for about two minutes and then he stopped. This was enough adventure for me and I promised myself that I wouldn't visit the dark web again. But the worst part was yet to come. So a couple of days passed and I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of my bedroom door slamming shut. Then I heard loud footsteps running downstairs. I went to the kitchen to grab a knife but all my knives were gone. That's when I heard sirens. My neighbors had called 911 because they had seen someone trying to break into my house. They described him as a weird looking clown holding a stack of boxes in his hands. I was scared shitless. To top it all off, I found the boxes and the note stuck to the wall in my room. It read, I'll come again to see you, my happy meal. I spent the night driving around. I did not want to go back to my house. In the morning, I took my stuff and moved out. The event still haunts me, so whoever's reading this, please don't ever go on the dark web searching for fun. It's full of crazy shit. I know you're frowning. This title is weird. I know. But if you could just give me a moment, I'll explain. I'll have to be fast, though. I don't know how close they are. Essentially, I ordered myself on the dark web. I'm a drug user, I'll admit it. 
Weed is my usual go-to, but I buy that off my friend. If, however, I want to get something a little heavier like acid or coke, I just order it off the dark web. It's surprisingly simple. A few clicks, some Bitcoin transfers, and then boom, I have acid in my P.O. box. But I'm also a curious guy. The dark web has always intrigued me up until a few days ago. I had only been on there to buy drugs off some sites some of my friends gave to me, but late one night I was sober and at home, which was a rare thing for me. So since I was bored, I decided to boot up my Tor browser and try and see what sort of fucked up shit I could find on the dark web. If you have ever been on the dark web, you'll know that you can't just search up Red Rooms or Hitman for Hire and get results. No. You have to find the links to these websites first. So I hop back onto Google again to try and find some links to a messed up website. I know it's weird that I was actively searching for the worst, but as soon as I got on the dark web that night, a sense of morbid curiosity overcame me. Anyway, I spent a little while trying to find some links. Anything I found though was either too tame for me or the links didn't work. At this point, I was about to give up. And I wish I had. But in one final attempt, I clicked on Reddit, hopping onto our deep web. I didn't think I would find anything. So I just scrolled through hot for about a half an hour before sorting by new. Then I found it. One simple text post titled, Slayer's Assassination and Life Ruining Services. In the text box, in the post, was what seemed to be a random assortment of numbers and letters. ZY3DKYTCAUBKQ2Y3 for those of you curious. It took my tired brain a second to figure out what it was, but I realized pretty quickly. It was a link, presumably to a Hitman website. So I decided to paste the link into my dark web browser and what do you know, it worked. But before I decided to go any further, I figured I should go back to the OP's profile to see if they have posted any other dark web links. However, when I went back to the post in question, OP's profile was deleted. Weird. Anyway, I reopened my dark web tab and hopped onto the site. Up along the top of the website was its name, Slayer's Assassination and Life Ruining Services, and next to it, what looked to be a skull inside of a crosshair. I chuckled when I saw it. The site must be fake. Upon scrolling down, however, I was not disappointed. There was a paragraph of white text on black background, and a small box to the right of the text that just said, place an order. The text was the main part, though, as it took up most of the page. It read, Slayer's assassination and life-ruining services offers everything from acid attack, crippling, blinding, castration, torture, rape, beatings, and good old death. We have the lowest prices out of any other company running similar services, and we are worldwide. We have a dedicated and experienced group of staff based all over the world. So if you need someone to be assassinated, or maybe you just want them to be scarred for life, don't hesitate to contact us. Again, I laughed. This had to be satire, right? Hell, I was even tempted to order it on someone just to see what would happen. Ironically, I actually have a half-decent job, so I can't afford it. Better not to risk it, though, I thought to myself. I was about to close my computer and call it for a night when I heard him knock at the door. I live alone, so it was unusual to get visitors, especially so late at night. But when I opened my door, it was... Just my good buddy Mark, who also happened to be my weed plug. As I opened the door, he didn't hesitate to let himself in and shove a big baggie full of pot in my face. This dude is the best shit I've had in a minute. We gotta try some. I couldn't say no. Cut to a couple hours later. It was early morning, and Mark and I are chilling on my couch, both blazed as fuck. He suddenly decides to get up, and I assume he's going to get some leftover pizza but he walks over to my desk and computer. Slayer's assassination. Are you going to kill someone or something? He mutters. What? I reply. Your computer, dude. It's got some hacker shit on it. It's the dark web, man. Don't fuck with it. At this point, 
I'm still on my couch, half asleep and not paying full attention. However, I sat up pretty fast when he said the words, Hey man, let's order a hitman on you. I hopped up and walked over to my PC. Part of my brain was screaming, no, what the fuck are you doing? But the majority of my brain, which was also the high part, was thinking about how funny it would be to order a hitman on myself. So I agree. I did make him get out of my chair though, because I didn't want him seeing what my credit card numbers were as I transferred some Bitcoin. At the end, after I wrote down all my personal details, like my address, age, and even a photo, I had to select what I wanted to happen to me. I just selected plain old assassination, and it was actually cheaper than some of the other things. I could have paid an extra couple of grand to be beaten before my death, but even my high brain didn't want to splash the cash too much on my own death. God, this is ridiculous. Anyway, I placed the order and then replied to a confirmation email and boom, it was done. A couple of clicks and I had ordered myself on the dark web. Mark and I laughed about it for a while, but then he left about an hour later, and I fell asleep, not too long after. I woke up around 9am, which meant I got at least 6 hours of sleep. Even if it didn't feel like I got 3, I got up out of bed, threw on some track pants and a cotton shirt, yes I sleep naked, and brewed myself a cup of coffee before sitting down to play some games and just enjoy my Sunday. You can imagine how shocked I was when I saw that I ordered my death the previous night. Even though I thought the sight was bullshit, I still felt a pit open up in my stomach. Even when I'm high, I usually make sensible decisions. I chuckled. Not like I could remember it anyway, but I guess Mark's new shit really was good. I would assume a normal human being would do something else. But I was still kind of out from it from the night before, so I just carried on with my day. I was a little more paranoid, sure, but as I said, I just assumed it was bullshit. I even laughed at the email I got from the website, saying that their hitman had been dispatched and was on its way. It was like ordering a package on Amazon. I was tempted to email back and ask for some day delivery, but I didn't need to ask, because that's exactly what I got. I didn't see it arrive, but around the time I started to cook myself a shitty dinner, I noticed a black-out sedan parked on the other side of the road from my house. I didn't live in a rural area, but there are a lot of trees and bushes between each of the houses on my street, so I would be surprised if any other house saw the car except for mine. At this point, I was freaking out. What if the sight was real? Even though I'm a big guy, I was freaking out. I don't own any weapons aside from a slightly larger than average kitchen knife. Fuck it. I'm confronting it, I decided. I put on a hoodie and slid the knife into the front pocket before waltzing out of my house and walking right up to the driver's side window of the vehicle. Even I was astonished at my own courage. Knocking on the window, nothing happened. It was rather anticlimactic. I was fully prepared to have the fight for my life, all because I did something really dumb while I was baked. But, like I said, nothing happened. I even put my head right up to the window as if there was a reflection to try and get a better look to see what's inside. I could barely see what was inside the car, but all I could make out were two empty seats. No one was even inside. I had got all hyped up for nothing. I decided to wait out by the car for a bit, but after an hour or so I was hungry and I had to go back inside to take my dinner out of the oven. I swear, it was only a minute between me going inside to take my dinner out of the oven and looking back out the window and the car being gone. I didn't even hear it go. Guess I'm eating my dinner with all the curtains closed and doors locked, I muttered to myself. I had just started to calm down when the power shut off. It was sunny outside and, coupled with the car, I now knew that this was the real deal. I had signed my own death warrant. I ran into my upstairs bedroom and locked the door, and then hid under the bed. I couldn't call the cops. What would I say? Oh yes, hello sir. Turns out, while super high, I paid 5k for some anonymous hitman to kill me, and now he's arrived. Send an officer ASAP, please, and thank you. So I just stayed hiding under my bed, and I still am now. I've been here for almost an hour now writing this. Think of this as my epitaph. I know I'm screwed. 
Just a minute ago, I heard my back door slowly creak open. This piece of writing may seem humorous to you, the reader, but in reality as you read this, I am under my bed praying to a god that lost all faith in me years ago to spare me, to let me go, but I know that won't happen. My bedroom door just opened and I can see a big pair of black boots. the street. Ask him what he knows. Make him tell the truth. The email came from an anonymous sender, and when confronted with it, Thomas began to get very nervous and visibly sick. Who sent it, Thomas? I want to know. If this is some sick prank to scare your little sister, it's not funny. I leaned against the counter and crossed my arms. The email pulled up on the laptop in front of my son. He kept his head low avoiding eye contact with me, staring at his fingers in his lap. I don't know what it is, Mom. Probably some spam email or something, he muttered, almost looking up at me, but quickly averted his gaze. A spam email that happens to have your name in it and information on the crime committed down the street a few weeks ago? I don't think so. I glanced at the screen for a moment. So, do you know something you're not telling your father and I about this? I said, looking back at him again. No. Tears welled up in his eyes as he stared at the computer screen. I don't know anything. What is going on with you, Thomas? This is so unlike you. Please, if you're not okay, please just tell us. We want to help you. We want our Tom back. I put my hand in his, but he quickly pulled away and wiped his eyes quicker. I don't know anything, Mom. I already told you. I'm fine. He got up abruptly and started towards the doorway. Now, I could feel the tears begin to form in my eyes as I saw him walk away. My son was almost unrecognizable. He was skin and bones, purple bags under his eyes like he hadn't slept in days. His clothes hung and bagged on him as I saw him walk to the door. I love you, I squeaked out. He stopped for a moment and looked back at me. And I swear to God, I'd never seen more pain in someone's eyes than I saw in his in that moment. He let a tear fall as he turned away again, his back to me now. I love you, Mama. He croaked out before exiting the room quickly. He began to look worse as time went on. Thin, frail, tired, fatigued. My husband and I found therapists took him to doctors, pulled him out of school, and did everything we thought was right leading up to my son's suicide. About a week after his death, I felt like half of me was missing. I couldn't move or talk or get out of bed, and I didn't. All I could do was think about Thomas, and the guilt ate me alive. I knew my email had to be overflowing with emails from clients at work, and I knew I'd have to get back to work soon. For me... For my husband, for my daughter. Two weeks later, I finally checked it. At the very top of my inbox was an email with an anonymous sender and no subject. I began to tear up, wishing whoever it was would just leave me alone and let me grieve. But curiosity got the better of me and I opened it. I wish I hadn't. The email was nothing but nine black words that read, He did it. And the game is not over. 